experimenting with our sourdough bread. Today we're making keto sourdough chocolate croissants. Let's go. If you've baked my sourdough bread recipe before, you get a big ball of dough. So I wanted to give you the option of separating it out and making different things. For example, you could take half the dough and just make a small loaf of bread. And today we're doing chocolate croissants and you're gonna get the sweet and the sour mixed together. And it's a pretty good combination. Not just croissants, you can do bread rolls, you could do hot dog buns and you can make pretzels as well. The options are kind of endless. The nutritional information and your shopping list is listed in the description box and let's get into the recipe now. Now let's begin by adding 80 grams of the starter to a bowl. It equates to about one third of a cup and you want to get all the frothy part of the starter in and that's why I feed both jars. And then use the liquid part if you don't have enough froth. Next, add one cup of warm water, about 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 degrees Celsius, one fourth cup of white vinegar and five large eggs. Your egg amount should weigh about 270 grams and if it's much less, you want to add another egg. Give it a good whisking so that you have bubbles on top of the mixture and then set it aside. Grab another bowl and we're going to create the flour in this bowl. Add one cup of almond flour, three tablespoons of flaxseed meal, three tablespoons of psyllium husk powder. And for the next ingredient, you can either use one and a half cups of oat fiber, one cup of ground basil seeds, or one cup of chia flour. And then add one teaspoon and one tablespoon of baking powder, a half teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of salt, and one tablespoon of sweetener. Then because I'm creating a sweet bread, I added a further quarter cup of granulated sweetener. The sweetener is optional and your choice. Mix all the dry ingredients together until you have one color and then pour the wet ingredients into the dry. Mix it well and you will see the consistency change to a stiff but sticky dough. Oil your hands, remove the dough from the bowl and place it onto paper. And now divide the dough into halves. I'm using one half to make these chocolate croissants and the other half can be used to make bread or buns as I said earlier. For the croissants, place 113 grams or almost one stick or a half a cup of butter onto parchment or baking paper and fold the paper into a square. Then roll the butter into a flat square disc, making sure you get into the corners. The size of the square doesn't matter because your dough is going to be rolled to fit. Next, roll out your ball of dough between two sheets of parchment or baking paper. You want it to be wide enough to fit the square of butter and about a quarter of an inch thick. Place the butter into the middle of the sheet of dough. Fold the dough over onto the butter and I like to use the paper to help me out so I'm not really touching the dough with my hands. Fold the other side of the dough onto the butter. Add the paper back onto the dough and roll it out flat again to about a quarter of an inch. You can repeat the folding process as many times as you like and I did mine 10 times. Even if you fold about five times, you will still get the same result. And we are doing this to incorporate that butter into the dough. For your final roll, you want to get your dough rolled out quite thin, about an eighth of an inch, and create a rectangle shape. And here you can see how I tidied up the edges. First, I oil the blade of my pizza cutter and then cut out eight triangles. Then made little cuts into the thicker side of each triangle. Placed a half tablespoon or a teaspoon of sugar-free chocolate chips again at the thickest part of the triangle. I went ahead and started rolling. Start rolling from the thickest part, making sure the chocolate chips didn't fall out and kept rolling to the thinnest point. If you find your dough is too soft, just refrigerate it for about 15 minutes. Keep rolling the croissants until all your dough is used. 
To get the best results, you want to use a baking tray with a rack like this so that the butter can drain away from the croissants during baking. Of course, I wanted to use a baking sheet because I think everyone will have that. And I also wanted to see how to manage the melted butter. I placed it on a baking tray and baked at 350 Fahrenheit or 176 Celsius for 40 minutes. During the baking process, I did have to get rid of the melted butter using a paper towel. And this is how they turned out. It tastes like a sweet bread with chocolate in the middle. I'm just adding melted chocolate on top and I needed a quarter cup's worth, then spread that on top. For all the variations of how you want to use this dough, your oven temperature will stay at 350 Fahrenheit or 176 Celsius. It's just your baking time that will vary. And you're looking at about 40 minutes to an hour. If you're joining us here from Instagram or Facebook, you've been putting up with all our shenanigans and you've been seeing all my experiments. So I hope you're enjoying our YouTube content as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you get to try it. Stay safe and be well.